I was that kid. The kid in the picture. Well, it's not really me, but I was bored, just like him. Until my father bought me an Amstrad CPC. It was an eye-opener, a game-changer, and I've never looked back. I built up quite the collection of games over the years, and Barbarian 2 was so good I bought it twice. <coughs> Moving on. But this video is about Amstrad games. I hardly hear anybody ever mention, but these games I mention are just scratching the surface. With that in mind, on with the show. Number 10. Ah, what about Fres Attack, eh? So towards the end of the Amstrad's life, around 1991, Bollaware burst onto the scene and brought us one of the best shoot-em-ups for the Amstrad CPC, but also one of the most difficult. But get this, it's a one or two player game and it uses the Amstrad's Mode 2, which is its highest resolution. Alias Doc Bartek is the programmer. And I'd just like to go on record to say thank you. This is a fantastic game. It's also really fast and there's four extra long levels and giant end of level bad guys. Challenge accepted. Number nine, Future Bike Simulator. Now this is one that again came late in the Amstrad's life, about 1990. And I got this one for, I think, 199. And I think I just like it because you're not just racing, you've got to shoot and pick up stuff along the way. And whilst that's hardly taxing, it's fun while it lasts. I kind of like the graphics as well. They use the Amstrad's Mode Zero, which is a personal favorite of mine. And the entire thing zips along at pace. Why couldn't these guys have been let loose on Outrun? Well, I like it and I prefer it to Space Racer as well, which is a similar type of game. Number 8, Mission. This is yet another game that took me by surprise. There's over 80 action pack screens. 80 action pack screens. Each level is well thought out and progression can be difficult at first, but stick with it. And get this, a copy of this game, an original copy, sold for 220 euros recently on Fleabay. It also came out on the Atari ST and MS-DOS and I've played both extensively and I can't tell the difference. They all look identical. In fact, I'd say the Amstrad CPC color palette wins. Number seven, Prehistoric 2. And one of the best platform scrollers on the Amstrad. I mean, wow. I'm not sure if there's a better game graphically on the Amstrad CPC, on the Amstrad stock CPC. And get this, the Amstrad Plus version is even better. Well, let me clarify that. It looks and sounds better. Amstrad Action awarded it 96%. And once you get into the game, you don't even really notice the start, stop, scroll. Somewhere in a parallel universe, all Amstrad games are coded equally. And Prehistoric 2 is not the exception, it's the rule. Number six, winner, winner, chicken dinner. It's Bob Winner. Set over three cities, Paris, London, and New York. I remember drooling over the graphics back in the day. And don't even try to play this game. Don't attempt to play this game until you've read the manual first because the controls can take some getting used to. Avoid the French version though because that only starts with a single opponent while the English version starts with two opponents per city and this is quite a unique game i can't personally think of another game like it on the amstrad cpc it's a collect em up come beat em up moonlighting as an adventure game number five the boxer in this one, you step into the shoes of a promising young boxer with dreams of reaching the World Championship. Unlike traditional management games, this title offers a bit of a unique perspective. You're not making decisions from the sidelines, you're in the ring, witnessing every punch firsthand. 
As the manager, you'll make critical choices, select opponents, decide on training routines, and pick fight venues. You'll get to feel the tension rise as punches fly and stamina drains. The Boxer offers a refreshing take on sports management games. Well, it did for the time. Its immersive in-ring perspective uh, and strategic depth make it a knockout choice for fans of the genre. With that, get ready to guide your fighter to fame and glory. Fury, Fury. Number four, Monty Python's Flying Circus. And it's from the legend's core design. I've no idea where your body uh, is transformed into a fish. And later on, a chicken. But if you enjoyed the escapades of Rick Dangerous 1 and 2, you should, in theory, enjoy this because it's a shoot 'em up come explorer in a similar vein. But this one's a bit weird in the sense that the lower the score, the better you do. It's a bizarre game. And even the boss fights, although brilliant, are completely bonkers. I mean, why does a bush follow you around? The enemies get stranger and stranger until it's game over. But it's a barrel of laughs until then. Number three, Graham Gooch's Test Cricket. Did Audiogenic ever make a bad game? They did international soccer as well, which was flipping amazing. But I enjoyed this one just as much. It got just as much cassette time. Today, surprise, surprise, I'm rubbish at it. But back in the day, I possessed the skills in this game of the legend Imran Khan. Yes, the sound could have been better. The graphics could have been better. But they captured the core gameplay. In fact, for a while, this was the best game of cricket you could play on a computer. Like the real thing, it's easy to pick up, it's easy to play, but it's difficult to master. Look at the legends, look at the names there. Terrific. Number two, Cyborg. The sheer speed alone of this shocked me to my core the first time I ever played it. Yes, it's vector style graphics, but have you ever seen anything move so smoothly or fast? Especially on an Amstrad CPC. The screen even shakes violently. Back in the day, I loved this. I couldn't get enough. And I still dip in and out of it every once in a while. It'll take some time to finally complete it. And complete it you will, as the sheer addictiveness of this game keeps you coming back for that one more go. And it's just as fast as the Amiga ST and PC versions. Number one, Power Play. This one hardly ever gets a mention, especially on the Amstrad CPC. But just look at it, it's an absolute thing of beauty. It's like a game of chess merged with who wants to be a millionaire. It's probably the best trivia game on the Amstrad CPC. In fact, Amstrad Action awarded it a rave and it really shows the Amstrad at its best. So great graphics, good music, good sound and a good challenge. What more could you want? And better still, it's still great fun to play with the family. Probably still the best example of its type. Well, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this and want more, please subscribe. Don't forget to leave some feedback, like this video, and it would really help the channel if you could share this video with other like-minded people. ta a bit! This is that part, like at the end of the cinema for a Marvel or DC movie, Extra content. Brucey bonus time. Now the Amstrad CPC never received a port of Street Fighter 2. We were promised, and the leading magazine at the time, Amstrad Action, even did a cover feature. And US Gold, the publishers, allegedly claimed it was on its way. Alas, it was never to be. But in a strange turn of events, Boloware gave us Frez Fighter 2. 
their last commercial game on the Amstrad CPC. What a way to bow out. Sadly, it was 1995 when this game was released. Most Amstrad CPC owners had moved on to the SNES or Sega Mega Drive, but Bollaware just wanted to prove that a Street Fighter clone was possible on a humble 8 bit with a final version being released in 1999 that allowed for six fighters. Fres Fighter 2 also uses horizontal overscan and each fighter is 36k in size. And if that's not good enough, it's a two player game where you can play or compete with up to 16 other players. And get this, there's a survival mode. So there's excellent graphics, excellent sound, excellent music. But how does it play? How did the sum of all these parts come together? Well, admittedly, it is a tiny bit slow, but nonetheless, it's a fantastic challenge. And I'd love to have experienced this in the Amstrad's heyday. Yes, a bridge too far, but it's always nice to see what's technically possible. So then, for those that haven't seen this game, I give you Fres Fighter 2.